Welcome. I'm Ann Steffen, and I'm on faculty at the University of Missouri St. Louis, and I'm a clinical consultant affiliated with the Optimal Aging Center. So this video is reviewing sessions six and seven of the Coping with the Blues Behavioral Activation Program, which pulls from materials from Oxford University Press's Treating Later Life Depression Workbook. So in our time today, um, we're going to be outlining the components of sessions six and seven, which are repeated material. I'll be walking through the specific learn and practice forms and making some suggestions for how to implement. I'll offer some reminders for treatment alliance and session pacing and some uh, reminders of also where you can find additional information in the clinician's guide. Uh, so with that in mind, just a reminder that session six and seven are held after a resident has participated in session five for session six, and then has participated in session six for seven, session seven. So we'd like to encourage you to keep going um, with this progression, even if there's been a delay um, in time between the two sessions due to uh, travel or um, a health incident, hospitalization, or some some other life circumstance, and to keep going even if the resident has has not been fully engaged in reviewing the materials. Um, there's this information is uh, uh, intentionally repeated in a way that they can continue to benefit, um, and so. Uh, that's one of the gifts of this approach is the material, yes, builds on each other, but we've built in some intentional repetition to help. So some of the recommendations for uh, session six and seven are as you're getting started uh, with the session to uh, remind that, wow, you know, our time together has really been flying. Uh, here we are in session six, and we just have a couple more sessions left because after this one, we'll just have two more. Um, or in session seven, oh my goodness, I've, it's been really fun to work with you. After today, we just have one more meeting. So you're you're orienting and anchoring them to where things are at. You're going to be spending a good 10 to 15 minutes reviewing the previous material because of that first steps practice form is so tied into this developing list of positive activities for them. And a reminder that as you're working together, the resident is writing things down on their practice forms while you are physically there and working on to get them started. And then to make it very clear um, that they're expected to continue to work on this between now and when you're going to meet next, and that you're really looking forward to the discussion that you'll have in the next session to learn what they've been uh, uh, what they've been finding out about their situation and what they've been developing as ideas for improving their life. You know, as I indicated, as a, as the clinician, I don't want you to feel discouraged. If the, uh, the resident hasn't um, completed that positive activities log the first week, you're going to continue to encourage and point out how it can be helpful. We're uh, really intentionally repeating content. Um, and in especially these two sessions, you want to watch uh, the temptation to jump into basic problem solving for stressful life events because they've been recording their daily life, because you've been looking at this link between activities and mood. Uh, this is also a time where a resident could be easily uh, sort of veer into the world of talking about why their mood is so low and the things that bother them, the things that are worrying them. And they may be pulling for you to then both offer emotional support for that which you absolutely can. It's like, oh my goodness, you have so many real stressors in your life, but to resist the urge to then try to problem solve those. Instead, the statement will be, well, because Marie, there's um, so many uh, really concrete difficulties that you have in life, as we discussed, it's even more important than ever to uh, find some aspects of the day that you do have control over and that we can build in some positive um, pieces, some things that are meaningful, rewarding, valued to you, um, even despite all these other things that are happening. So we're focusing on increasing positive activities, even in the face of these very challenging life circumstances and relationships. 
So uh, here's that picture reminding of um, that whenever possible, you're working at a table and chairs and sitting diagonally with each other. We've been talking about that throughout our time together. And here's that slide that I first reviewed in the previous video for sessions four and five that outlined the components for behavioral activation. That, um, that mood monitoring that was happening, even if it was happening imperfectly during sessions four and five to help identify activities that are linked to negative and positive mood and to look for some of the, the shifts in mood that happens from day to day. And now in sessions six and seven, we're really engaging in the active part of scheduling enjoyable, meaningful, rewarding activities and then to be learning over the process of this, what are the ones that are most connected to positive mood or staying away from the activities that are linked to negative mood whenever possible. And then we're going to be engaging in some problem solving on how they can increase the positive activities over multiple weeks. So session six and seven and then eight involve an amount of problem solving together in addition to the other content. So here we see the outline for the material that you'll be using in sessions six and seven. Uh, the, you can see that the goals are to reinforce this idea that what the pieces of our lives that we have control over, what we do on a daily basis, um, is very important for our mood and that we're going to continue to generate that list of positive activities that is the do for practice form and we're providing multiple copies of that that's a, a living breathing evolving document. Um, uh, and I'll provide some examples um, when we look at that list um, and then. In session six and seven, the advance that we're making in behavioral activation is helping them begin to plan for and schedule and then proactively engage in specific positive activities. That is, it's not less that we're just um, uh, victims of our like circumstances and, and things just kind of happen or don't happen in day in our days, but that we can proactively have some um, agency in those. And then I'm going to suggest that at some point during session six or seven, not in both, um, that it would be a good time to recollect a uh, PHQ-9 score to see where things are at with the depression scores. Um, so I'm going to be walking through some of the forms that you'll be using. So here, do eight, uh, we introduce that image of the downward spiral and um, uh, the sense that low mood breeds low activities and when we're um, less active then our mood sinks even lower and that we can really sort of go downward and that the good news is that we have a way of stopping that downward spiral and moving forward. And so since in um, session uh in the emotional literacy sessions, especially in session three, you introduce that metaphor of looking for positive um, mood, positive feelings, and that attention as a process of watering the seed and watching it grow. We're reintroducing this idea of just nudging and making some small changes in daily life um, uh, can build over time and, and that we can start small, but that we're going to continue to build in um, this uh, proactively looking for ways to add in some new positive, new positive, meaningful, rewarding, valued activities in daily life. So um, you've started in the previous two sessions on making the list. We're now going to continue in session six and seven, that uh, development of an active list. And so we're um, uh, these don't have to be really, really big things. They can include very small things. And we're looking for things that are doable, uh, that aren't just one time only um, travel across the country to see a family member. Well, that's great. But, you know, unless someone is is frequently traveling on a weekly basis, that's not the type of things that we're looking for here. We're looking for things that they can really build in and schedule on a daily basis. And it's going to evolve over time. Um, so our recommendations are that you look for opportunities to prioritize any physical activity. We don't have to call it exercise, but any movement's beneficial. Um, and, um, and activities with others or that encourage people to feel connected to others, even if the activity itself is, is a solo activity. 
And there's a variety of ways in, in which that can be done. So during this um, work, as I said, the do for practice form is really a hallmark for behavioral activation. And it's something that's evolving over time. So in sessions four or five, they might have written down something like go for a walk. And then you've realized over time that that was just a little bit too vague and that um, it helped them to refine that to um, uh, take a morning walk with my neighbor, uh, Bill, and, or um, uh, volunteer to walk my neighbor's dog uh, uh, since they're ailing and, and they're less able to. That's something that I can do that both is meaningful because it's helping them out and it's getting me some exercise. So over time, the things that they've written on previous versions of Do For, you may want to look at. Do you still like the wording of this? Do you want to keep it on the list? Or do we want to tweak in some way to make it easier for it to be concrete and um, for you to actually engage in it? So we're looking, as we're both developing the list and starting to schedule these in a proactive way, we're looking for what, um, what's possible, right? We're not looking for the impossible. Um, uh, we're being aware of what's needed. Um, we don't want to have too many things on the list that are contingent on other people being available at a specific time and date, because then it's going to fall apart. So um, uh, we're looking for ways to substitute activities that are possible now that, that have a piece of something that was meaningful in the past. Um, and then if there's any way to involve family, friends, so including chosen family, uh, this is a, a good opportunity to have those conversations of who can, even if it's not activities that you're doing with someone else, how can the important relationships in your life, how can you um, get some help and support from others as you're going through this program? So in Do 14 Learn, we're, we're then introducing that we're actually going to um, proactively schedule these activities in advance. Um, so that we're then able to make the connection. So this is the first form where we're introducing the positive activities log. And then in Do 15 Learn in this session, we're looking at this page and sort of talking through um, Tyrone's example and saying, okay, so let's look at this. What are some of the things that you see as you look at this example of a positive activities log? And, and this is a way of seeing that, oh, um, that forward slash is referring to things that, that are scheduled in advance. And then you close the loop and make it as an X after it's actually happened. So you're talking about the pattern of what Tyrone scheduled and then did, and then scheduled and didn't do. And then let's look at that mood score. And so you're having those questions at the end. And you're encouraging the resident to actually physically write down on those lines what their observations are. Um, and we're making a recommendation that they think in general about three to four activities a day from their list. So here is that um, do five practice form. And this is going to be repeated now for the rest of the time in the program that there's room for up to 10 activities. And again, um, if there is something that somebody says, oh, but I really like my morning coffee and my crossword puzzle. And if currently they don't have a lot of things to put on the list, then I would say clinically, and they want to put it on the list, go ahead and put it on the list like the first time. But then by the second session where you're repeating use of the positive activities log, as you're building up new activities, you're, um, you know, something that they've been, that's already been a part of their day that has a high frequency already. Well, you know, it sounds like we don't need to have that on the list in order for you to do that because you've already been doing that. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that you really enjoy your crossword puzzle. Yeah, those could really be fun, can't they? Um, but let's, let's see whether we can take use of, of these 10 spots to add on some new things. Um, and then uh, do 11 uh, which is a bonus form, then helps for your higher functioning clients and clients who are all in and very actively engaged with the program. Um, it helps link them to values and purpose in their life. Um, and so, you know, just the reminder in this behavioral activation work that we're looking for daily activities that are positive but infrequent to increase. 
We're avoiding um, the, the pull to be engaged in a lot of problem solving for negative activities or negative relationships. This isn't the time to say, well, if we only can like make this better and improve these negative things, that then that will help their depression. Behavioral activation is really targeting right now an increase of things that are already experienced as positive or would be experienced as positive if those activities enjoyed. And then we're spending some time thinking about how can we modify things that were really important and valued and meaningful in the past but have kind of dropped out due to a variety of life circumstances. So session pacing uh, is important throughout the entire program. This is that same reminder that you want to be really sort of um, pacing the time that you're spending on the various portions of session six and session seven to allow time at the end to uh, clarify questions that the resident has about what's expected of them between one week and then the next session to solicit feedback about how this went for them and to find a way to point out something that you see as a sign of progress or a sign of um, a form of encouragement that you can offer. And we address this in the clinician guides in pages 82 and 83. Uh, we're at the end of our overview for session six and seven. We provide that two hour webinar on uh, culturally responsive CBT with older adults in session three. We're uh, talking about behavioral activation and that's available as an additional resource for you at the E4 Center website. We have those three tip sheets that are available through the Optimal Aging Center that provide some general and within session reminders for working with older adults. And with that, um, we come to the end of our overview for sessions six and seven. And I'm um, looking forward to the conversations that we'll be having as a group and to sort of problem solve um, questions that are coming up.